Hello and welcome to Invalid Entry. My name is James Taylor and today we're going to be looking at why twisted pair Ethernet connections are so awesome. Um, for those of you who are following on from my previous video where I was making a network card, you see there's, there's, there's two Arduinos here which are connected to my Pis at the top here. And one of the first challenges I had was to do with um, uh, not issues with the communication between the Pis, especially to do with the ground voltages. Um, and it really made me appreciate how good Ethernet connections are. So I thought I'd do a very quick video about the sort of the history of Ethernet and why we use twisted pair connections inside of an Ethernet cable. So back in the day, Ethernet, by the way, didn't necessarily have anything to do with um, IP. The IP protocol is a high level in the stack, so we were using Ethernet connections like this. And this is what they called thin Ethernet, because there was also a thing called thick Ethernet. And it's basically a coaxial cable. Uh, terminated in what we call a BNC connector, um, which is a central pin and then like a, a common outside. And it's shielded, which means that there's actually a, a, a sort of a woven shield all the way down here. So the signal can go up and down the, the main center point and isn't affected by noise or other areas like that. Also, this common ground means there's a nice reference to reference against. Um, there were loads of problems with this. It was really nice for some reasons, like you would have uh, one um, uh, long wire that connected everyone would sort of tap into that wire when the signal got to the end you had to put a resistor on the end so that your signal didn't just bounce off the end and come back um, but if two people talked at the same time on the network uh, it broke so you'd have to back off so there was a maximum speed of transmission that you could use on that network uh, not many people use uh, thin ethernet or thick ethernet anymore it does have some advantages because if you want to wire 100 computers together you only need one wire Whereas now you would need to, to trunk a hundred individual patch cables in, or you put like a local switch and a hub and out. Um, but yeah, that is uh, thin Ethernet. Uh, it's over there because it's part of my uh, amateur radio antennas, uh, which are around the corner. Um, these days, you we use a lot of amateur people use the um, the old thin Ethernet cables for their network for their antenna cables because they make very very good antenna leads. Um, However, we moved to twisted pair. Twisted pairs became cheaper mainly because uh, mass production. If you produce lots of something, it becomes cheaper. And everyone has seen, I think, an Ethernet cable. Inside the Ethernet cable are multiple strands of wire, and they're in pairs, and those pairs are twisted. And there is a very good reason for that. If I now move to my simulation, this is a, a simulation of me sending a signal down a wire. And I'm going from 1 volt to 5. In reality, I'd probably go from 0 to I think like 2.4 volts. Um, the lower the voltage, the better, because you can't actually make these very vertical lines. You actually have to, when you say, when you turn the transistor on, there's a very slight charging effect going on with the capacitances inside of the transistors and between the wires themselves. So it doesn't quite get these perfect curves, but this works the I'm sending a series of pulses down. Maybe this is a noughts and ones, maybe they're uh, PM would do it, doesn't really matter. The point of sending these signals down the wire, and I want to receive them as accurately at the other end as possible. Um, there are also, um, I will talk in another video about the maximum length of a wire because there is a maximum length of wire that you can do for a particular system, and it's all down to the, how these pulses are designed. Um, but we'll, that's, a, that's a whole topic in its own right. So, the first thing we'll do is we're going to introduce some noise. So here what I've done, I've introduced uh, a sine wave onto that. Maybe this has been picked up from a nearby um, a, you know, power cable. Maybe it's something inside the, the, the actual device itself. There's some frequencies in the device. But I've added some noise onto here. Now, at the moment, this is, this is seeing over here especially, it, it may become a little harder to tell what's low and what's high, especially if those sort of happen on the boundary. You might lose this, this bit here may get lost it may think oh this is actually a low a, a speed low and there's no spikes here you you do actually get spikes when someone like lights a cooker and presses the piezoelectric or their barbecue tch, 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 that noise there or a car going past because they're you know they're making lots and lots of sparks you can get random sparks of noises as well so which can cause a, a low to be a high or confuse the highs what i did though was i introduced a second wave onto it as well and now we're really getting difficulties in telling Where's low light? Like, is this actually a low, a lowish high, or is it actually a, a very high low? Um, and again, here in the middle, it's getting very hard to tell sometimes whether these things are one or not, or where the transition from one and not actually happens. Now, 
The answer to this is a twisted pair. So in a twisted pair, what we do is we actually take one line and we take the other line to be the inverse. So on this graph here, and sorry, it's a bit small. On this graph here, you can see I've got one line. Usually, the common is these are at the same point, they're at that zero. Uh, I've separated them out so it's easy to t tell. And what we do is at the other end of the cable, we look at the difference between these two lines. So the difference is either naught, or in this case one, or it's lots. And that's what I'm interested in, is the difference naught or lots? And uh, that can re recover the original signal from that. So my original signal was here, and that's what I've done here. I've taken the difference. I've actually divided it by two just to make it, the graph look nice. But, but that's what you're doing. You're basically saying, is there a large or a small difference in these two things? You don't even have to care too much about the value of the voltages. You don't have to mathematically subtract them. You could just, you know, electronically say, is there a large or a small difference? Is it over a certain threshold difference? When we reintroduce our noise onto the cable, the important thing to realise is that anything affecting one of the strands in the wire will affect the other strand in the wire. So if I have something here which causes a, a, a higher voltage in one cable, it will cause a higher voltage in the second cable as well. It doesn't cause a negative voltage, it causes the same direction voltage. So I'm interested still is not where this point is, but where this point is in relation to the point on the other wire. So you should be able to see here, there's a constant gap between these two, cable, these two lines, and there's a constant gap here when it's in high. So when I subtract these two voltages again here, and you can tell with this formula, I've actually taken those two columns, not the first two columns. When I subtract those two voltages again, I get back to my original sing signal. So twisted pairs are incredibly resilient against external noises being added to the channel. Um, they still have a problem of a maximum transmission distance, um, but if I can cause spikes and things like that, and that's one of the problems I was having here was that my, my two cables here, any bit of cable acts as an antenna, which means that when I'm transmitting on one, it will actually be transmitting, and because they're the same length, it will be picked up by the opposite one. So straight away, I have a problem with my two bits of wire interfering with each other. But also because they're not shielded, they're not in a twisted pair arrangement, they will be picking up um, noise from the, the, the TV screens, the mains power, uh, the radio gear, my laptops, the printers. There's so many electrical things in here which all are generating small amounts of um, electrical noise. And because they're in close proximity, they will pick those up. Uh, so twisted pair definitely is a fantastic invention. Um, and and it's, it is that simple, you're looking at the difference between two points and it allows you to recover almost perfect. These little nodules here are just because of the uh, how Excel likes to smooth the curve. Um, and in reality, you wouldn't get such perfect things in and out uh, because there is a very slight charge in discharging. It all depends on how, how slow you want to send your signal. So on a slowish signal, you'll get something almost as perfect as this. A bit faster would be a bit different. Well, that's all for this week uh, or for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you do, please hit like. If you have any more questions, please, please, please put them in the comment below. Um, otherwise, I will see you in the next episode. Yeah.